Hi guys, welcome back to Just Make It. So this is an Apple Pencil and it was given to me by someone who uses it almost daily for the digital art projects on their iPad. As you guys can see, unfortunately they've managed to break this little area around the nib and they asked me to see if there's anything that I can do to get a temporary sort of fix or what we, any other solution until they get their new one. So in this video we're going to be discussing how I made this little sleeve that holds it all together and actually based on what this person tells me gives it a nice bit of grip as well as far as 3d printing projects go this is a little bit more on the basic side but i always find it really rewarding to see how 3d printing can be used to make really good custom solutions for small odd jobs like this so with that in mind let's jump in all right guys so as always we're going to go ahead and start off by taking some measurements now the design that i have in mind for this project is basically a sleeve that extends from halfway up the nib to just over here before this flat edge starts. I believe this part is used for the magnetic connection to the iPad or something, I'm not sure, but I want to try and avoid going further than that point. So we're really just going to take three measurements, where we want the sleeve to start, end, and roughly how long it will be. And then we can go into Fusion 360, input that data and go from there. So let's go ahead and take some measurements. So to start off with, we'll go about halfway up the nib. So I'm calling that 4.05 mil. And then just before that flat edge, 8.27. And then in terms of distance, we're looking at pretty much a centimeter. I'm gonna call that a centimeter. Right, those are really the only three numbers that we need. So we're gonna jump over into Fusion 360, input those values as parameters, and then get to modeling. So let's, let's head over. Right, so over in Fusion 360, we're going to start by putting those values in as parameters and then we can go from there. So top is the top part of the sleeve and that was 4.05. Bottom was 8.27. The distance between top and bottom was a centimeter. Now I'm going to add a couple more parameters. The first one is going to be called thickness. This is basically how thick we want the sleeve to be. I'm going to start off with one mil, or now let's just say two. That's subject to change, so this is a, a value we may need to come back and edit in the future, but for now we'll start with two. And then another parameter is going to be the tolerance, so how much space we want between the sleeve and the pencil. For now, I'm going to start off with zero. I think that might be okay, but we might need to edit that in the future as well, so that's where parametric modeling comes into its own. Great, so with those values in place, we can go ahead and start modeling. So we're gonna start off with the circle function in sketch, and we're gonna use the bottom diameter, and then we're gonna do an offset, and we're gonna call this the thickness. So that's that one mil offset. Then to get some height, we're gonna start a construction plane, and we're gonna offset the construction plane by the distance. Okay, so you can see here we've got our plane there and we're going to start a sketch now on that plane new circle which is going to be the top and then we're going to go ahead and do another offset to the thickness we decided earlier Perfect. so if i finish the sketch and have a look you can see we've got our shape there all right guys so with our sketches in place we're going to go ahead and use the loft function and we're going to go ahead and join these two together now for some reason I've had this issue in the past. The loft function seems to make a solid object here where we want the center part to be cut out. So I'm not sure if this is the best workaround. This is what works for me. But if anyone's come out with a better solution, please feel free to let me know in the comments. But you basically do another loft, but this time you change the operation to cut and that hollows out that middle bit there. And if we turn off our sketches, you can see we've got our Apple Pencil sleeve here. So what we're going to do now is we're basically going to export three different versions and that's going to be where we do our tolerance so at the minute this is set to a tolerance of zero so i'll go and export that and then using the offset face command we can go ahead firstly let's edit the parameter for tolerance so now let's change it to let's say 0 0.05 and then we do offset face and then we do tolerance but for this one, we want to do minus tolerance. So, this. 
negative tolerance and it, you can see there if I do a quick control it just makes a little bit of extra space there so what I'm gonna do guys is just do three different versions so I'm gonna do tolerance of 0 0.05 0 and then a 0 0.1 and then we can move on to printing so guys before we move on to printing I just want to talk through material considerations here so I usually print with two different materials mainly one is PETG and the other is PLA so PLA is a black and PETG is a grey and to be honest I'm, I'm actually gravitating more now towards PETG I just find it easier to work with the main downside with both of these two materials or the main thing that makes them not the best suited for this case is the fact that they are both rigid so if I try and bend this you'll see it doesn't really give and if I apply enough pressure it'll probably just well, it deforms all, all together now the problem is that these two materials are risk of are at risk of damaging the Apple Pencil. So for this particular project, we're going to use another material called TPU. TPU is a flexible filament, so you can see I am deforming it and it just bounces back into shape. So two main benefits of that. Firstly, it's not going to damage the pencil. It'll print a bit softer and I'll be able to slide it on without it causing too much damage, which is important. Secondly, TPU prints like rubber, so and rubber has quite a good grip, has quite is quite frictional. So that means I'll be able to put this sleeve onto the Apple pencil without needing to use any super glue or anything like that. And that's really important as well because you don't really want to do anything irreversible to something like this. So I thought that would be an interesting bit to share. If you guys have any further insights on that, feel free to drop a comment. But we're going to be going with TPU and I've picked out this lovely white one to try and match it to the pencil. Again, if you think a different color would have looked better, feel free to let me know. But with that out of the way, we've got our model done. We know what material we're using. Now it's time to get it to slice, so get that ready and then get printing. So over in Prusa Slicer, we've got everything sliced up. So if I, show you, if I zoom and show you guys, over on the right here, we've got our three different models and they're named by their tolerance. So this is with no tolerance, 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. Hopefully one of these three works, otherwise we'll have to go back into a Fusion 360 and add a little bit more or a little bit less. But we're going to go ahead and load up our TPU onto our Prusa and get printing. Right guys, so hot off the press, we've got our first batch done. Let's have a look. So nice prints, nice color, but to me, these look a little bit too thick. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these off to the side and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make the thickness instead of two mil, one mil, and I think that'll look a little bit nicer. That's a little bit too thick for my liking, but I'll keep them for safe keeping for the minute. Let's go ahead and get a new batch printed. So here are the new ones that I printed and you guys can see they're a little bit thinner than the ones that we printed before which is nice. We don't want them to be too sort of intrusive on the pencil. So what we're going to do now is take these off, put them on the pencil and see which one fits best. So again just a reminder these are printed in three different tolerances. We'll see which one fits best and I think, I think we'll be pretty much there. I've taken the prints off and here is our Apple Pencil. So now it's time to go ahead and try these on and see which one fits best. There's not too much of a difference in tolerance here, so practically speaking, the difference may not be massively noticeable, but I'm just going by sort of touch and feel here. So let's see. This one's got a little bit of stringing inside. I don't know if you guys can make that out. So this one may not be ideal, but let's give it a go. Not bad, not bad, I'll put that aside, could, that could work. Let's try this one, this is a much nicer and cleaner print. Much less stringing and the colour is nice and uniform as well. So that one, I like that, let's try this. Lovely, that, that's, that's a lot nicer. And the colour matches quite well as well. It doesn't look too different in terms of the shades of white. That's good, that's the front runner at the minute. 
And then let's try the last one. This is probably the nicest print of them all. See? Perfect. There you go, guys. So, what I like about this is that when you take it on and off, firstly, it doesn't damage the pencil in any way, but also, given that it's TV and it's a little bit elastic, you can almost sort of stretch it over the nib of the pencil just to get that extra bit of grip. So that is a very nice fit. I'm happy with that. We're gonna go with this one. Now, the only thing left to do is to test to make sure this actually works on the iPad. So let's go grab one and see how things go from there. And that's a wrap for this video, guys. So, managed to kind of bring this pencil back to life. As you can see, I'm still able to use all the features as normal, so I'm able to write and rub things out. So hopefully for my, for my friend, this will do the job just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving some comments down below. As always, I'll leave some links to similar projects that I've done in the past for you guys to check out. But otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.